boom it's showtime everybody good morning downright sports is back and it's crazier than ever because of the breaking news that we're going to touch on in the second segment known as the topic but if this is the first time as i spit everywhere from excitement if this is the first time you ever watching the show i'm your host brent reed and this is a sports show from a fan's perspective, giving your fans thoughts from a crazy fan's mind. What? In any case, we kick off as we do until the end of their season with the newest segment we have, the WNBA Corner. That's right, kids. And it's going down. It's breaking out last night. Sue Bird, one of the all-time greats of the WNBA, is done for the rest of the year. She has not played since May, going down with knee issues, and she is not going to participate this postseason as her team, the Seattle Storm, go into the playoffs without her. They will need her. She is a big for a big reason why they make the why they are as known and relevant, but they won't have Sue going forward. Moving on, the playoffs are set. Not going to break down all the playoffs right now. We're going to do a playoff preview on Friday. And I'll um, have the uh, team set and who's going to win and my thoughts. I'm going to do some research. But uh, one of the key games that I did notice that is right now set, if the, the league ended today, if the season ended today, the Washington Mystics take on the, um, the Phoenix Mercury, um, the Arizona yeah, Phoenix. What am I? What am I thinking about? Anyway, the Phoenix Mercury. They're going to take on uh, two MVP candidates: uh, Elena Della Don, Brittany Griner. That is big for the league. The league needs to put a big circle around that game, those that series, and just keep pushing it because you got two ladies that are right now the front runners for the MVP award. Elena Della. Uh, hopefully, the Mystics for the first time in their career could go on in the playoffs, which will be big for them. And maybe Brittany Griner shows the team doesn't need um, uh, Tarazi to help them get on and win a championship as she leads this team on in the playoffs. So we'll see how that one breaks down and goes. Now, when we come back in the second segment, it's breaking news time. Uh, somebody just got paid, and I found out as soon as I woke up this morning. Dowry Sports. All right, check it out. So, breaking news, uh, Dallas Cowboys have backed that money truck up. Beep, beep, toot, toot. <laughs> and giving Ezekiel Elliott their lead running back, the league's lead running back last year and um, two years ago, uh, his first year, and uh, paid him. He sat out the whole preseason, which I do believe he was gonna get paid no matter what. Dallas did not want to start the year off like <laughs> but we'll touch on that in a second zeke just got paid now he's the highest paid running back in the league he basically got an extension so it's a six-year extension it's worth 90 million dollars 50 million of it is guaranteed he just passed todd Gurley of the los angeles rams who is at 45 million if you include zeke's current contract and then his extension by the time everything is done, it's over $100 million as long as he can play it out, which is until 2026. Uh, Zeke right now, 24 years old, but one of the best running backs in all of football. Um, his second year, which was probably the team's worst year with him, he was 10th in rushing. But then this past season, and like I said, his rookie season, he led the league in rushing. Um, it's going to drum up a lot of questions. Because now that you paid him, what is the ceiling? The ceiling is a Super Bowl. There's always a Super Bowl for Dallas Cowboys. They're the New York Yankees. They're the Los Angeles uh, Lakers. They're the um, they're um, the Manchester United. They're Serena Williams. They are the marquee. They have to win. But it's something they have not done since the, my before my girlfriend was born. Fact. <laughs> uh, but Dallas has to win a Super Bowl to within this period, I say within the next two, three years to make this contract worth it. Just because they signed him, if he's if he does fantastic and he's the lead rusher through every year he's on the contract, but they never win a playoff game, they never get it done, was it worth it? Was it worth the money? Because you could have took that money and potentially spread the wealth to get better players. Now. Uh, their wide receiver, God, I can't think of his name right now, don't worry about it. They're going to have to probably franchise tag him, and they're probably going to lose their star cornerback 
in the offseason because they still have to pay um, Dak Prescott, the quarterback. Yes, the thing that makes everything go in the NFL. The quarterback will is entirely got to back that money truck up for him too, and he has he's going to be looking to get a little piece of cheddar. But the Cowboys, as I said, marquee franchise, it's now time for them to put up a shut up. They have to make it to an NFC Championship game, I feel, for them to show that they're moving in the right direction. Their quarterback is only three years in. Their running back is only three years in. They're a young group of, they're, they're a young team. We expect a lot because they're the Cowboys, but enough's enough with all the talking and enough's enough with all the expectations every year either they need to it, it just needs to be a make or break season now you gave him his money he does he just can't be the lead rusher he has to lead this team to an nfc championship game i'm never gonna say super bowl he has to lead to an nfc championship game if you look at some of the teams that uh are in from a division standpoint the eagles may be their only competition but the eagles lost their, their best quarterback Wink, wink. Uh, Giants are in a rebuild mode. Redskins are always in a rebuild mode. And after that, you win your division. After that, you just have to, you know, or will this year be the year for Green Bay, the Lions, the Vikings, or Chicago? That, you know, that conference is up in the air. The South is always a hit or miss. Um, and then out West, it's going to either be the Rams again. Or now that Javain, uh, Clowney has gone to Seattle, is Seattle going to bounce back? Or will the 49ers show their face? So for, from, a, from the Cowboys, win this division and you look really good going to the playoffs because you just have to win that one game that Sunday or Saturday, give or take, when they schedule you. And you're good money. But it starts with winning this division, and it starts with Ezekiel Elliott. And boy, is that pressure on your back. You're like a you're like an ex-smoker. That monkey getting real heavy, and you want to pack a new porch real fast. Uh, anyway, we wrap up the show. We're going to do MLB's uh, The Clubhouse, and we're going to wrap up the show. Downright Sports. All right, kiddos. So we're going to wrap it up. Thank you all for watching today. Uh, once again, breaking news, Ezekiel Elliott just got paid $90 million for an extension, six-year extension, $50 million of a guarantee. So, congrats, sir. But this is the MLB Clubhouse. And that's uh, another segment that we're going to do until the baseball season is over. I kind of like doing these segments. It's better and it gives me less stuff i got to try to look into. Anyway, um... Some things that happened last night, uh, if you're watching the show, the Mets blew it. I talked on my podcast, which uh, is the I'm Just Talking podcast, you can listen to currently right now, uh, about the Mets and their path to the playoffs, and they blew it last night. The Mets blew seven runs in one inning. Good God almighty, losing to the Nationals, helping the Nationals keep their lead, and giving hope to everybody in Washington who's already, you know, given them the championship six times already. You know, they, you know how many championships Washington Nationals have won. Uh, um, then uh, out west, for those of you, because you go to bed at a reasonable time, Mike Trout continues to keep pace in the home run uh, race with 44 home runs. He's um, going battle with his other L.A. counterpart for the Dodgers, Cor uh Cody Brewer, both of them now with 44 home runs, and Trout could hit 50 for the first time in his career. Speaking of the Angels, Trout's teammate and maybe mentor, Albert Pujols, remember him? Well, he is climbing closer and closer to Willie Mays. Uh, Pujols hit 654 last night, uh, getting him knocking on that door. Willie Mays at 666, Alex Rodriguez at 690. Five, am I not mistaken? Six ninety six. Avery should have played one more year or a couple days just see if he can get to seven hundred. But uh, the race to seven hundred, uh, can pull holes to get there. Another season, maybe. Uh, Albert currently right now this year will it tell me? I don't feel like looking it up. Yes, it will tell me. Albert currently this year in home runs has twenty one home runs. That is impressive. Uh, I'm going to spend a little time on this. If you think about it, the age of this guy, Albert is 
39 years old and only once in his career he's never hit 20 twice and i'm gonna count last year because he hit 19. <laughs> so this guy is a freak he, he's one of the greatest and when he retires we're gonna look back and we're gonna be like damn we missed out because he went to go play with the angels who really is like the clippers i'm sorry um but i mean congrats and then what else we got oh Gary Sanchez, my Yankees, uh, not only got a career high, he also has a team record. Um, he's the first Yankee catcher to hit 34 career home runs and counting because the season's not over yet. And it's also his career high. You got to ask yourself, guys like Yogi Berra, uh, Jose Posada, heck, um, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as catchers go. And the Yankees have never had a catch. Just Yogi by himself never hit 34. And Yogi's one of the best hitting catchers of all time. It's pretty cool. So congrats for Gary. And think, he missed time. He missed, like, months. He went on uh, the injury list twice this season. He still put up 54 home runs. So that's quite impressive. So hopefully my Yankees pull it out this year and make a, a run to the World Series. As the playoff pitcher is winding down and we're getting closer and closer right now if the playoffs started today they have it on here if it started today i need to wrap this up uh yankees will face um tampa yeah so if it ended today tampa and the a's face each other in the wild card washington and the cubs face each other in the wild card the winner of that would face the team with the best record and that's currently between the Yankees and Houston and um, the Dodgers got the best record out west. So you can forget about that Atlanta. But uh, yeah, that would be pretty cool. So we're all looking forward to it. Um, hey, good show today. Not too long. Real quick. I'm doing it from the phone. So see the crutch in the corner. Um, do some promotional stuff real fast. Like I said earlier, check out the podcast. I'm just talking. Hosted by me. Brent Reed, go to Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, or Google Play. Subscribe today. Leave a comment. Also, subscribe here at Down Enterprise. Subscribe here. Um, news Flash. Go to Facebook, Downright Sports fan page, and check out News Flash. It's the new, um, I write every now and then an opinion paragraph on you know, a topic or something that's happening and just give you my thoughts. I'm not doing one all the time. Just do one when I feel like it. And it's pretty cool. And that's pretty much it. And you guys enjoy the rest of your week. Be safe. Deuces.